All right, hi. Uh, my name is Manoj Kumar. I'm from IBM. I res represent the power systems. Um, I know uh, some of you uh, know that OpenShift is available in another architecture. I'm, I'm mostly here to talk about OpenShift on power. Uh, so from a systems perspective and not really any of the other software content you'd hear about uh, you know, IBM doing on top of OpenShift. <coughs> so I re um, um, I'm sort of the chief, chief engineer for OpenShift on power. Since um, IBM is acquiring Red Hat, I'm, I'm uh, required to put this disclaimer up that everything that I'm talking about here is stuff that we've been working with Red Hat. We've been, we were a uh, great partner for Red Hat for over 20 years. We've got, had uh, RHEL working on our systems for, for a long time. Um, so everything I'm going to talk about is, is stuff that is pre-acquisition. No, nothing is here that I'm going to speak about is, is related to the acquisition. Um, Briefly, to go through um, what I want to cover is what is power or power systems, just give you some idea of what, what the background is. Um, to talk specifically about the Red Hat OpenShift on power that we brought together on, on our platform uh, with that partnership. Uh, talk a little bit of a couple of use cases. One, for OpenShift for sort of data intensive workloads and, and then OpenShift for AI and ML on power, what those use cases look like, and then finish up with a demo, if, if I can, if I can squeeze that time in. Um, so what is power or power systems? Well, it powers the largest supercomputer in the world, Summit, um, at 200 petaflops, uh, you know, runs, and, um, this is something we built in collaboration with, with Red Hat, NVIDIA, and Mellanox. So it has um, you know, 27,000 NVIDIA GPUs, 9,000 power, nine servers, and you know, 250 petabytes of storage. It's also the number two power systems also are the number two in the supercomputer list. Um, so both number one and two. Um, as of November last, last year, um, are run on our power servers. Um, well, power is not just for HPC. Uh, we do bring uh, build a lot of scale-out servers. We build those servers, which were sort of the building block of those supercomputers with the GPUs. We make that available in a 2U form factor, so you can have a small sub version of that supercomputer at, at your desk or in your data center, as well as we do some scale-up servers as well, 2U and 4U servers um, that typically run our um, uh, power VM hypervisor. The, the ones on the left run typically bare metal or KVM, and the one on the right runs our, our own um, sort of hypervisor called power VM. We worked with Red Hat to bring um, RHEL on all, our, all of our servers, and as a result of that, OpenShift uh, runs on all, all these servers as well. Um, so specifically about OpenShift on power, uh, about that partnership that I kind of touched upon, um, we have OpenShift 3.10 and 3.11 were the two releases. The first one was available, uh, was 3.10 in, in October of last year, and then 3.11 came a couple of months after in, in December. Uh, we're working in partnership with Red Hat to bring 4.x to power as well, um, but we're not able to you know, make that initial release. So, so 4.2 will be the first release uh, that will be available on power. I show in this picture kind of uh, blow up of what kind of systems would run. Um, so on the physical side, which is in you know, a bare metal mode, you would run that, um, what we call our AC922, our, our um, two use servers with, with uh, uh, dense sort of compute and, and NVIDIA GPUs. Uh, you can run our scale out server either in KVM or uh, bare metal mode. And then we have our enterprise class servers, uh, as I mentioned typically are all sort of virtualized. So um, <coughs> I'll talk a little bit about a couple of use cases um, on why you might want to choose power for, for your workloads. The first workload I want to touch upon is sort of a, a MongoDB workload with sort of a Node.js application front end. Uh, this is sort of simulating, um, as you can imagine, if you, know, you leave the conference at the end of the day and you head to your, uh, the Gothic Quarter and you want to look for restaurants, it's sort of simulating that, you know, you going out and looking up um, 
restaurants in a particular neighborhood. Um, the OpenShift configuration for this is a simple thing that we did in our lab. Um, with the front, meet, the front end sort of driver generation, that's going to simulate a whole bunch of people, you know, taking out their mobile device and, and clicking, um, you know, that search, search for restaurants. The control plane is a single master node that's running in a RHEL 7.6 on, on a bare metal server, and the uh, the back end, the worker nodes are are really running on our Power M, Power VM sort of uh, scale up servers, but it's still a small form factor with two VMs on, on that. Um, and the goal for this was really to look at uh, what kind of density, container density, can you get on our servers. Um, so so you, you can think of it as a pod scaling test, you know, just scaling up the number of pods. Um, and what we found uh, um, is really that you can get twice the number of containers. You can get, you know, 148 containers um, off that combined MongoDB and that Node.js application um, on that single power uh, server, you know, with, with the two uh, worker nodes. So the, the, the server was carved up into two VMs. Um, the, the, for that geospatial workload, you know, the TPS is, is a little, little better, uh, but the real story is really the containers per core. Um, so you get to about, you know, 7.4 containers per core whereas on the Intel two-socket server, similarly configured, similarly priced server, perhaps the price on that Intel server is slightly more. You get, um, um, uh, you know, two sort of containers per core. So the ratio is really about 3.6x uh, of container core. So, so any kind of workload like that, that's kind of scales and you can pack them in, typically makes sense to, to do it on power. So that's sort of that my first use case where we were able to do that, um, that work in, in our labs. Um, the next few slides I want to kind of go through is for AI and ML. We have a lot of technologies that we work at at IBM, bringing in a lot of our technologies from our research groups. Um, things like, um, you know, vision and vision processing, um, things like, uh, you know, automatic hyperparameter optimization, Elastic distributed training, so training across uh, a cluster of GPUs. I think someone touched upon that earlier. Someone actually talked about the video as well. Um, and you can typically train much faster on power servers, and I'll go through a couple of use cases. Um, so we do uh, make a whole bunch of open source frameworks on power available, um, Cafe, TensorFlow, um, PyTorch, and so on. And typically, you get you know, somewhere between three to four x improvement of, of running those frameworks on power. And that's mostly because we have some special technologies on power to, to coherently, for the GPUs to coherently access all of system memory. So you're not constrained by just doing your training in just the limited amount of me memory that the GPU or in each individual GPU has. Um, you're able to do something unique uh, that we've done uh, on our systems called distributed deep learning. Um, so, so that's really why you see some of those advantages. Um, um, so a couple of cases, uh, uh, we'll go through uh, one use case is that our um, Power AI systems with the Power AI vision is being used at the Hong Kong International Airport for, this is really sort of vision based you know, a whole bunch of cameras, kind of like what, what you heard uh, from China Mobile earlier. Um, so in those cases, you know, it's things like crowd and queue management, d detecting un unattended objects, intrusion detection, and so on. Um, so that's, that's running uh, on power um, with that Power AI vision. Um, we also have um, uh, a bunch of power servers in the Mass Open Cloud, um, and uh, the Mass Open team were um, joined me at the Red Hat Summit a couple of weeks ago, and the kind of use case uh, they kind of shared with us is some of the researchers at MIT, you know, um, want access to the same kind of computing that's available in that supercomputer. And um, the team at, uh, at Mass Open was able to show them OpenShift and, and see uh, and tell them the value proposition of why you don't need a dedicated server with things like OpenShift. You can just, you know, dynamically provision a pod, uh, get 
get your GPU-based workload running, and then you know, um, sort of decommission that workload and, and re-get re access to that. So they kind of validated our use case of, of you know, essentially GPU-based systems with OpenShift are, are a good combination. And we're continuing to go, go ahead and work with them. Um, so how am I doing on time? Oh, excellent. You okay. Can do it um, when you need to. So a um, couple of other things I'll touch upon is um, IBM also has um, something called the Model Asset Exchange. This is a notion that um, you know, AI should, should be available or, or machine learning models should be available. So we have a bunch of trained models that we have upstreamed um, from IBM and that's available through the Model Asset Exchange. Uh, things like, you know, um, sort of uh, facial age estimator, or image caption generator, and so on, um, object detectors. So there's a bunch of models available.